Hello everyone, my name is Eduardo. I'm currently doing a master's degree in clinical anatomy and education. Today we're going to be learning about the anatomy of the hip joint and its associated movements. We'll also have a look at the muscles that perform each movement, uh, their innervation, and then a little bit about their attachments. Hopefully after watching this video, you'll be able to identify the bony structures of the hip joint, its ligaments, uh, the muscles and, it, and the actions, and then their innervation. The hip joint is a synovial ball and socket joint between the head of the femur and the acetabulum of the hip bone. This is the most stable joint in the human body because it needs to sustain all of our body weight. So having a look into the acetabulum here, this is a lateral view of the acetabulum. Firstly, it is made up of three bones, the ilium, the ischium and the pubis. Highlighted in blue here, we can see the lunate surface, so this is what will actually be in contact with the femoral head. And we can note that the acetabulum looks like a, a bowl with a broken rim. So there is uh, an opening in its inferior border and it doesn't actually complete a full circle. Instead, we have the transverse acetabular ligament to make up for that gap in bone. So let's have a better look at what these structures look like. Now, even with just the transverse acetabular ligament in place and the lunate surface highlighted, the acetabulum is looking a lot more like a socket for this joint. In the center there, uh, represented by number five, we have the acetabular fossa, which is mainly occupied by adipose tissue and the ligament of the head of femur, which will hold the femoral head in place. We will look at this ligament uh, again in the next section. Now to provide even more stability and deepen the joint, we have the acetabular labrum, which is a cartilaginous ring which is going to surround the acetabulum, giving it a little bit of more depth and stability. In fact, the transverse acetabular ligament is actually a thickening of the acetabular labrum. Moving on to the femur, the head of the femur is completely surrounded by articular cartilage, with exception of the fovea capitis, which is this depression that you can see right now. Now, this is the site of attachment for the uh, ligament of the head of femur, which is also called foveal ligament. A few other important bony landmarks here is the greater trochanter, the lesser trochanter, and then the intertrochanteric line, which is an important site of attachment of some of the ligaments of the hip joint. Okay, so now we've understood the bony parts of the hip joint, but as it is right now, it is not very stable, right? We need to add a few ligaments. So we've talked about two ligaments already, the ligament of the head of femur and the transverse acetabular ligament. Now, one thing we haven't mentioned about the ligament of the head of femur is that it actually connects into the transverse acetabular ligament. And it will also transmit the foveal artery. This will help supply a little bit of blood to the head of the femur, although it is not the main supplier of that area. Okay, so the other ligaments of the hip joint may be thought of as extensions of the fibrous joint capsule. So like every synovial joint, the hip joint also has a joint capsule. Now the name of these ligaments are actually very self-explanatory, makes it very easy. First one is the iliofemoral ligament, so it will connect the ilium to the femur. So this ligament runs from the anterior inferior iliac spine to the intertrochanteric line, and it has a characteristic Y shape. This is the strongest ligament in the human body and it will prevent hyperextension of the hip. Next, we have the cubofemoral ligament. This ligament will run from the superior pubic ramus to the intertrochanteric crest. And this will serve to strengthen the joint anteriorly and also inferiorly. So it kind of runs below uh, the neck of the femur. And lastly, we have the ischiofemoral ligament, which will run from the ischium to the femur, this will attach to the greater trochanter, and it has a characteristic spiral shape, or a spiral appearance, so that will help you identify it, and it will hold, it helps hold the femoral head in the acetabulum. So these are the ligaments of the hip joint. Also in this model we can see the labrum as well contributing to that um, stabilization of the joint, and that way with the bones and the ligaments we have a very stable but also very mobile joint. You can see I can move it around quite a bit. So now let's move on and talk about movements. What are the muscles responsible for each movement of the hip joint? 
Okay, so hip flexion refers to this movement. And it is performed by the iliopsoas, which is the combination of the iliacus muscle here and the psoas major from iliopsoas. Then we have rectus femoris, which will also uh, flex the hip. We have sartorius and then pectineus just in there. It's a little bit tricky to see in this model, but we'll put an image. And these muscles conveniently are all supplied by the femoral nerve. So uh, one way to think about it, you can think hip flexion, think femoral nerve. Now, the pectineus muscle also receives some supply from the obturator nerve. That's worth uh, paying attention to. Next movement is extension, which looks like this. This movement is performed by the gluteus maximus and your hamstrings. So the biceps femoris, the semimembranosus, and semitendinosus. So the gluteus maximus is innervated by the inferior gluteal nerve. And then the hamstrings are innervated by the sciatic nerve, which is the biggest nerve in the human body and can be seen here. So you can see it running down to the, supply the hamstrings. Now the next movement is adduction. It looks like this. Think of adduction as adding something to your body. So you're moving your legs from far away and you're adding it towards your body. Adduction. This, is, uh, this action is performed by the adductors. So the muscles that are in that medial compartment of the thigh. They include adductor longus, magnus, adductor brevis, and then as well as gracilis, which you can see well here, and also pectineus. And conveniently, all of these muscles that perform adduction are supplied by the obturator nerve. Now, the only exception here is adductor magnus. Because it is such a big muscle and covers such a broad surface area, it will also receive some innervation from the sciatic nerve, in particular from the tibial division of the sciatic nerve. Now the next movement is abduction. Think of it as being abducted by aliens. So you're moving your leg away from your body. It is being abducted. Now the muscles that perform this function are gluteus medius and minimus. You can't really see gluteus minimus here because it's lying deep to gluteus medius. Then piriformis, right there. And then tensor fascia, lata. Now, Gluteus medius, minimus, and tensor fascia lata are supplied by the superior gluteal nerve. And then piriformis is by the nerve to piriformis. So it's not that hard to remember. Next movement is medial rotation. Uh, an easy way to, to remember what is medial rotation, what is lateral rotation. If you perform medial rotation and keep your leg straight, you will see your foot moving towards the midline. So middle, medial rotation. Uh, this, this movement is performed by gluteus medius and minimus and by the tensor fascia lata. So it's quite similar to abduction uh, with exception of piriformis. And like mentioned before, gluteus medius, gluteus minimus and tensor fascia lata are all innervated by the superior gluteal nerve. So the next movement is lateral rotation. And in my opinion, this is the trickiest movement because all the muscles that supplied receive different innervation and there are quite a few. So the main lateral rotators of the thigh are gluteus maximus, lying here, and piriformis. But then it is also assisted by the actions of superior gemellus, obturator internus, inferior gemellus, and quadratus femoris. So you can, these are the small lateral rotators of the thigh. Now in terms of innervation, gluteus maximus is innervated by the inferior gluteal nerve. Piriformis, as we mentioned before, nerve to piriformis. And then um, superior gemellus and obturator internus both receive the nerve to obturator internus. And then inferior gemellus and quadratus femoris both receive the nerve to quadratus femoris. So one good way to remember this is that the gemelli muscles don't have a nerve named after them. Instead, they will be supplied by the nerve of the muscle that's closest to them. Okay, okay, that was a lot of information. So let's take a little bit of a break and see if you can remember. So what is the name of this movement? And what are the muscles responsible for this movement? As well as the nerve that innervates these muscles. To help you memorize the function of each muscle as well as their innervation, 
we can try to adopt a different approach. And instead of looking at the movement and the muscles that make that movement, we can look at each individual muscle and then see what is their innervation and their function. So the following table is available in the description and it will also include some of the attachments and origin points of each muscle uh, that can make it a little bit easier to understand their function. I really recommend having a look at this table in your own time because having done multiple spotters in medical school and then also in the my master's degree, they love asking about muscle function and innervation. Okay, so let's do a quick summary. The hip joint is the articulation between the femoral head and the acetabulum of the hip bone. There are several ligaments that will hold the joint in place. These are the ligament of the head of femur, the transverse acetabular ligament, the iliofemoral ligament, the pubofemoral ligament, and the ischiofemoral ligament. Okay, so in terms of movement, flexion is performed by the iliopsoas, rectus femoris, sartorius, and pectineus, which are all innervated by the femoral nerve. Extension is performed by gluteus maximus, semimembranosus, semitendinosus, and biceps femoris. Gluteus maximus will receive the inferior gluteal nerve, while the hamstrings will receive the sciatic nerve. Adduction is performed by the adductor longus, adductor brevis, adductor magnus, pectineus and gracilis, which will all receive innervation from the obturator nerve. Abduction is performed by gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and tensio fasciolata, which are all innervated by the superior gluteal nerve, and then piriformis, which receives the nerve to piriformis. And then medial rotation is performed by the gluteus medius, minimus, and tensio fasciolata, which will receive the superior gluteal nerve. And lateral rotation is mainly performed by the gluteus maximus, piriformis, and then it is assisted by the obturator internus, the superior and inferior gemelli, and the quadratus femoris. The gluteus maximus receives the inferior gluteal nerve, the piriformis receives the nerve to piriformis, the obturator internus and the superior gemellus receive the nerve to obturator internus, and then the inferior gemellus and the quadratus femoris receive the nerve to quadratus femoris. I hope this video helps with your revision. Linked in the description are a few other resources that I find really helpful. If you want to have a look at some prosected images of the muscles we were mentioning, or make it easier to identify the nerves as well, yeah, or if you even want to have a read into some textbook articles. So uh, feel free to check that out as well. Thank you very much and keep learning.